Okay, yeah. <coughs> so uh, hi everyone. So good morning, good morning all. So first of all, uh, let me know whether audio and video everything clear. So first of all, let me know whether audio and video everything clear. Yes. Okay. So if it is not clear, uh, please let me know through chat box here. Right. Okay. So I hope uh, everything is clear. I hope everything is clear. Audio and video, everything is clear. I hope so. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so if it is not clear, please let me know through chat box here. If it is not clear, please let me know through chat box. Okay, <clears throat> so I hope everything is clear, right? Okay, so uh, we are dealing with the subject electromagnetics and uh, we have started the topic uh, that is transmission lines. So that is transmission lines, right? Okay, okay. <clears throat> so in transmission lines, we have covered transit time effects. We have covered in the previous sessions, we have covered transit time effects and distributive nature along the transmission line. Distributive nature along the transmission line. Okay. So after completing this year, after completing these two topics, after completing these two topics, we have developed a, an equivalent circuit model, an equivalent circuit model of transmission line. We have developed an equivalent circuit model of transmission line. Understood? Okay. So, <clears throat> what is the circuit model we have developed here? What is the circuit model we have developed? So, we have seen that the resistance is going to distribute along the transmission line and the inductance is also distributed along the length of the transmission line and uh, the capacitance will be developed across the transmission line and it is also distributed throughout the transmission line and then conductance has developed across the transmission line and it is also distributed throughout the length of what throughout the length of transmission line understood so if you consider if you consider a transmission line of length delta x if you consider a transmission line of length delta x then what is the resistance that is distributed throughout this length of the transmission line here is nothing but r into what r into delta x now, what is the inductance that is distributed throughout this length of the transmission line is nothing but what is nothing but L into delta x. What is the capacitance that is distributed throughout this transmission line is nothing but what is nothing but C into delta x. And what is the conductance that is distributed throughout this length of the transmission line is nothing but Z into delta x. Yes or no? Okay. So, this location we have considered as x, uh, then this location has become x plus delta x. Uh, so, the source or the voltage that we have applied here, let us assume that is V of x, uh, and here the voltage that is available will be what? V of x plus what? V of x plus delta x. Right. Okay. So, here the current flowing is I of x, uh, and here the current leaving this. Uh, parallel branches is nothing but i of x plus what i of x plus delta x understood okay so now here i have already told that uh, because of transit time effects because of transit time effects uh, uh, <coughs> because of transit time effects so we should not apply kvl and kcl to a transmission line but here we can apply kvl and kcl under what con under one condition so that is if you make uh, if you make uh, if you make delta x tends to 0 if you make delta x tends to 0 then the change in phase shift the change in spatial phase shift uh, between what between source and load uh, will be what can be uh, will be almost negligible Yes or no? If you make delta x tends to 0, then source and load will be almost at the same location. So, in this case, we can neglect the spatial phase shift between source and load. Understood? So, that means uh, the spatial phase shift between source and load is nothing but what? Is nothing but beta into delta x. So, this will tends to what? This will tends to 0. So, under this condition here. So, if we neglect the spatial phase shift between source and load, then in that case, in that case, uh, we can apply what? We can apply happily KVL and KCL. We can happily apply KVL and KCL. So, in this case, KVL and KCL we can apply here. If you make 
if you make delta x tends to 0 then the spatial phase shift between source and load that is beta delta x uh, will also tends to what will also tends to 0 so under this condition we can apply happily kvl and kcl so by applying kvl we have got one equation right okay by applying kvl we got one equation so that is what here that is a uh, I am writing here. So, by applying KVL to the circuit, uh, we got uh, dou V by dou X, dou V by dou X is equal to what? Minus of R plus J omega L into what? Into I. Next, by applying KCL, we got another equation that is dou I by dou X is equal to minus of Z plus J omega C into V. Understood? Okay. So, if you want, you can put here V of X, here I of X, here I of X, here V of X these are the equations we got so by differentiating this equation by differentiating this equation with respect to x again we got uh, dou square v of x by dou x square is equal to what is equal to what we got here uh, here we will get dou i by dou x so in place of dou i by dou x we have replaced this one so finally we got uh, r plus j omega l into what into z plus j omega c into what into v of x and uh, by by differentiating this equation with respect to x on both sides uh, we got another equation another second order differential equation so that is dou square i by dou x square is equal to what is equal to we got uh, r plus j omega l into what into z plus j omega c into what into i of x so these are the equations we have derived here in the previous session yes or no okay so these are the equations we got uh, in the previous session right okay these are the equations we got okay now see here so this is the equivalent circuit model we got so this is the equivalent circuit model we got and uh, okay so this is the equivalent circuit model so with the help of this equivalent circuit model by applying kvl and kcl by assuming delta x tends to 0 we got we have derived all these expressions here we have derived all these equations right okay so funny uh, good morning funny good morning right okay next see here <coughs> okay so <coughs> okay see uh, in previous gate here in previous gate uh, they have asked one question so in previous year gate uh, they have asked one question so that is uh, which of the following which of the following will represent uh, the correct circuit model the correct circuit model of transmission line so which of the following which of the following which of the following represents represents the correct equivalent circuit model of the transmission line which of the following represents the correct equivalent circuit correct equivalent circuit here this is equivalent circuit equivalent circuit model of the transmission line if 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 the conductors if the conductors of transmission line made with made with brass if the two conductors here if the two conductors of the transmission line made with brass and and the medium and the medium between between the two conductors and the medium between the two conductors is filled with is filled with a dielectric medium filled with a dielectric medium that is teflon the dielectric medium is teflon here okay so whose relative permittivity epsilon r is equal to 2.25 so epsilon r is equal to 2.25 
So which of the following represents the correct equivalent circuit model? Correct equivalent circuit model of the transmission line. If the two conductors of the transmission line are made with what? Are made with brass and the medium between the two conductors is filled with what? Is filled with a dielectric medium that is Teflon whose relative permittivity is 2.25 and, <coughs> and uh, loss tangent and loss tangent in the dielectric medium and the loss tangent in the dielectric medium that is tan delta that is tan delta is equal to what is equal to 0 ok that is tan delta is equal to 0. So, this is the question they have asked here this is the question they have asked in the previous year here in the previous years they have asked this question ok. <coughs> So, they have asked this question here. So, which of the following represents the correct equivalent circuit model of the transmission line? If the two conductors of transmission line are made with brass and the medium between the two conductors is filled with what? Is filled with a dielectric medium that is Teflon whose relative permittivity is 2.25. Okay, and the last tangent in the dielectric medium they have given as tan delta is equal to 0, tan delta is equal to 0. Okay, so here they have given different options here, they have given different circuit models of the transmission line. So, you have to identify the correct one. So, in option A they have given R delta x by 2, L delta x by 2. C delta x, Z delta x, R delta x by 2, L delta x by 2, right, ok. This is option A. This length is delta x. Next, option B. R delta x, L delta x, C delta x, Z delta x, So, this is option B, right, ok. Next, option C. R delta x by 2, L delta x by 2, C delta x, R delta x by 2, L delta x by 2, ok. So, this length is delta x. Next, option D. Option D, they have given L delta x, C delta x, Z delta x. This is delta x. Right. So, these are the different options they have given here. These are the different options they have given. So, you have to identify the correct one. You have to identify the correct one. Right. Okay. So, see here what they have given. So, you have to identify which one of this following, which one of this following A, B, C, D will represent the correct equivalent model, correct equivalent model of the transmission line. If the two conductors of the transmission line are made with what? Are made with brass, 
are made with brass right okay so if the two conductors of the transmission line are made with brass and the medium and the medium between the two conductors is filled with what is filled with a dielectric medium that is teflon and last tangent in that dielectric medium is tan delta is equal to what tan delta is equal to zero so that means they have given that two conductors two conductors of the transmission line are made with what are made with brass okay so are made with a conducting material brass and the medium between these two transmission lines uh, is filled with what is filled with a dielectric medium is filled with a dielectric medium so that is teflon that is teflon whose permittivity epsilon r is equal to 2.25 and they have given that in this dielectric medium in this dielectric medium they have given last tangent tan delta is equal to what last tangent tan delta is equal to zero okay so we will study about this last tangent while dealing with uniform plane waves here while dealing with uniform plane waves so i hope you know what do you mean by this last tangent okay so this last tangent tan, tan delta is nothing but what is nothing but the ratio of what the ratio of it is the magnitude of the ratio of conduction current density to what to displacement current density okay so you are going to get you are going to get tan delta is nothing but what tan get delta is nothing but sigma by omega epsilon so which is equal to what which is equal to zero okay so if tan delta is equal to zero means tan delta represents last tangent which is equivalent to what sigma by omega epsilon okay so take this relation as granted here we are going to deal with this last tangent in detail while dealing with uniform plane waves okay so as of now take it as granted so tan delta is nothing but what it is nothing but sigma by omega epsilon which is equivalent to what which is equivalent to zero so that means here from here we can say the conductivity of this medium the conductivity of this medium sigma is equal to what sigma is equal to zero Yes or no? Sigma by omega epsilon ratio is equal to zero means what? Means a sigma is equal to zero. So instead of giving directly conductivity of the medium equal to zero, he has given indirectly tan delta is equal to zero. Understood? Okay. So we know tan delta means tan delta means last tangent, which is nothing but sigma by omega epsilon. So if it is equal to zero, means conductivity of this medium is equal to zero. So if the conductivity of this medium equal to zero means uh, whatever the medium that is present. whatever the medium that is present it is what it is a perfect dielectric medium they have given that it is a perfect dielectric medium yes or no so the conductivity of the medium is equal to zero so if the conductivity of the medium is equal to zero then then what is the equivalent circuit model of the transmission line that's what they are asking here okay we know that two conductors are going to made with some conducting material that conducting material they have given as brass okay next between these two conducting materials they have filled with some dielectric material that is teflon okay and the last tangent of that medium they have given as equal to zero which implies that conductivity of this medium is equal to zero which means the medium between these two conductors is a perfect dielectric medium perfect dielectric medium so if it is a perfect dielectric medium if it is a perfect dielectric medium then what is the equivalent circuit model of the transmission line what is the equivalent circuit model of the transmission line okay can anybody tell the answer here for this question see while developing the equivalent circuit model of the transmission line i have explained uh, uh, why the resistance is distributed why the inductance is distributed why the capacitance is distributed why the conductance is distributed what is the cause of the conductance Yes or no? So all these things I have explained here. All these things I have explained. So here they have given that conductivity of this medium, this uh, medium is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. So what happens if the conductivity of this medium is equal to zero here? You are having two transmission lines. We know that these two lines are going to operate at what? Operate at different potentials. So whenever they are operating at two different potentials, understood? Let us say it is at V1, and let us say at this location it is V2. So and we know that V1 is greater than V2. v2 that means it is at let us assume it is at higher potential and it is at lower potential so we know that uh, whenever it is at higher potential and lower potential there develops what there develops a electric field between what between these two conductors understood and uh, <coughs> if the medium if the medium between these two conductors uh, uh, is a perfect dielectric if it is a perfect dielectric then the conductivity of this medium is equal to what conductivity of this medium is equal to zero so if the conductivity of this medium is equal to zero so then there will be no free charge carriers available in this medium if there are no free charge carriers available in this medium then the conduction currents in this medium will be equal to what will be equal to zero Yes or no? J C is nothing but what? J C is nothing but sigma into E. So E is present, but conductivity of the medium is equal to zero, and hence uh, the conduction currents in this medium will be equal to what? Will be equal to zero. 
understood so these currents we also named it as what here these are in very very <coughs> Uh, the conduction currents are very very less uh, so that's why we have named it as what we have named it as leakage currents we have named it as leakage currents so here the leakage currents is equivalent to what is equivalent to zero the conduction current is equal to zero means there is no conducting path there is no conducting path between this line and this line so if there is no conducting path between this line and this line then the conductance then the conductance value z is equal to what then the conductance value z is equal to zero why we are having the conductance value here because the conductivity if the conductivity of the medium is not equal to zero then we are going to have what you are going to have some conducting path between this line and this line yes or no okay so and the currents that are flowing between these two lines is very very less very very less so those currents we named it as what leakage currents so if the conductivity is equal to zero then there will be no leakage currents and there will be no conducting path between these two lines so in this case z equal to what z equal to zero so that means in the equivalent circuit model here in the equivalent circuit model there should not be z there should not be z understood see i have told that you can represent in any of these forms here you can represent the equivalent model in any of these forms you can represent r delta x by 2 here and r another r delta x by 2 here see whenever i am representing whenever you are representing the resistance i have already told that this resistance is not the resistance that is located only at this particular location this is the resistance that is distributed what that is distributed half of the length of what r delta x by 2 means it is the resistance that is distributed over half of the length of transmission line so here we have represented half of the resistance and here we have represented another half of the resistance okay so r delta x by 2 and r delta x by 2 will give you what will give you the total resistance offered by what offered by the total transmission line understood okay okay so you can represent in any manner here so if you observe option a so here they have given z they have given z but here z must be what z must be equal to 0 and hence option a is wrong and in option b also they have given z so option b is also wrong in option c they have not given z so that means z is equal to 0 so that means there is no conducting path between these two lines okay so that means option c is what option c is correct and in option d in option d they have given z z is present means option d is also what option d is also wrong so here they have not mentioned what here they have not given r value r value is equal to what r value is equal to 0 here they have considered r equal to 0 understood okay but uh, z is not equal to 0 so there is a z present between these two lines that means uh, this option is also wrong okay so the correct option for this question is option c right okay <coughs> okay so this is previous gate problem here okay so if you understand how r is developed and how c is developed how z is developed how l is developed so if you understand all these things uh, then you can answer this type of questions uh, very easily understood okay okay if you blindly remember the circuit model then you won't uh, you, uh, you won't answer this type of questions right okay you have to know the reasoning why r is coming why l is coming why c is coming why z is coming all these things right okay okay yeah. <coughs> Right. Okay. So these are the equations here. These are the equations we got from the equivalent circuit model. Yes or no? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. <coughs> So we have completed that gate problem here now again coming to our topic right okay so from the equivalent circuit model by applying kvl we got this equation and from here we got this is second order differential equation and by applying kcl we got this equation and uh, by doing a, a differentiation on both sides with respect to x we got this second order differential equation understood and what is the solution of this equation we got here what is the solution of this equation we got so here we have represented here we have represented r plus j omega l into z plus j omega c with what with gamma square with gamma square so here r plus j omega l into z plus j omega c is nothing but what is nothing but gamma square 
right okay okay yeah. so <clears throat> for this year dou square v by dou x square gamma square into v so for this one what is the solution we got we got the solution is exponential form the solution is exponential form yes or no okay so v of x what we got here we got uh, v plus into what v plus into e power minus gamma x plus v minus into e power gamma x now for this one we got uh, i of x i of x is equal to i plus into what i plus into e power minus gamma x plus what plus i minus into e power gamma x so these are the solutions these are the solutions of this equations of this second order differential equation understood now what is the complete solution here what is the complete solution we got so that is v of x comma t v of x comma t see the voltages and currents on the transmission line are functions of what are functions of both space as well as what as well as time understood okay so v of x comma t is equal to what is equal to we can write it as what v of x and uh, all the signals all the voltage signal or current signal whatever we are dealing so all those signals are what are time harmonic in nature so if they are time harmonic in nature then we can represent them as what in terms of time we can represent it as what e power z omega t what do you mean by time harmonic here time harmonic means they are varying sinusoidally with respect to time so that sinusoidal variation with respect to time we are going to represent as what e power z omega t so now what is the complete solution we have determined v of x there yes or no and multiplied by what multiplied by e power z omega t is going to give you what is going to give you the complete solution that is v plus e power minus gamma x plus v minus into e power gamma x into e power z omega t so similarly i of x comma t similarly i of x comma t is equal to what is equal to i of x into e power z omega t which is equal to what which is equal to i plus i plus into e power minus gamma x plus i minus into e power gamma x into what into e power z omega t so these are the complete solutions here these are the complete solutions of voltages and currents on the transmission line voltages and currents on the transmission line right okay okay yeah. so now see here so i have told that this gamma this gamma this gamma is called as what here this gamma is called as propagation constant this gamma is called as propagation constant constant okay its units its units are per meter here yeah. its units are per meter its units are per meter okay so we will see in detail here what do you mean by this propagation constant and all we will see in detail right okay so generally this gamma is a complex quantity generally this propagation constant is a complex quantity so generally we will represent this complex quantity as what as gamma is equal to what gamma is equal to alpha plus z beta alpha plus z beta so in general gamma is a complex quantity and this complex quantity will represent as what will represent as alpha plus z beta alpha plus z beta we will see what do you mean by alpha what do you mean by beta and what do you mean by gamma all these things we will see here right okay okay so as we proceed into the subject we will see uh, what is the meaning of this gamma alpha and beta all these things we will see as we proceed right okay so as of now as of now what i am going to do here is uh, just in this solutions i am going to replace gamma with what gamma with alpha plus z beta then we will observe how these solutions are looking like how these solutions are looking like okay so by substituting gamma equal to alpha plus z beta then what you are going to get tell me if you substitute v of x comma t v of x comma t is equal to what is equal to v plus into e power minus gamma x so minus of what minus of alpha plus z beta z beta into x into what into <coughs> e uh, v plus into e power minus gamma x right okay plus plus v minus into what v minus into e power gamma x that is alpha plus z beta alpha plus z beta into x multiplied by what multiplied by e power z omega t okay see we will analyze with respect to voltage here we will analyze with respect to voltage the same is valid the same is valid for current also understood both are looking in the similar manner or not okay so there is no need to analyze both here if we analyze voltage then correspondingly uh, the same analysis will be valid for current also right okay so that's why i'm writing only one equation this is enough right okay now see here now 
just I am trying to observe how these solutions are looking like, right? So see here. So v plus I can write this as v plus into e power minus alpha x e power minus alpha x. Here you are having e power minus z beta x multiplied by e power z omega t. So what I am going to get e power z of uh, omega t minus beta x. Can I write in this manner? Yes or no? Okay. So here e power minus alpha x e power minus z beta x multiplied by e power z omega t. I can write it as e power z of omega t minus beta x. Now similarly coming to this second term I can write this as v minus into what into e power alpha x into e power z beta x multiplied by what e power z omega t. So I can write it as e power z of what e power z of omega t plus what omega t plus beta x. So this is the solution this is the solution of voltage on the transmission line. So similarly in place of v plus and v minus if you write i plus and i minus that will become the solution of current. Yes or no? Okay. On the transmission line. On the transmission line. So now if you observe how it is looking like here, how it is looking like? How it is looking like? Tell me. So just by observing, we can say how this solution is looking like. Tell me. See what this what this term will represent here, what this term will represent. See, it is just like what? It is just like a f of a v t minus x or not. See, we know that any function any function which is of the form f of f of f of beta into plus or minus vt plus or minus x will represent what will represent a wave function will represent a wave function yes or no so we know that f of if you sub uh, if you multiply with beta i can write this as what plus or minus v beta v beta into t plus r minus what plus r minus beta into x and we have already studied here we have already studied that uh, omega by beta in the previous sessions whenever i am dealing with the nature of the wave there i have explained yes or no omega by beta what we got here we got a uh, velocity of the wave yes or no the ratio of omega to beta will give you the velocity of the wave and here omega is equal to what omega is equal to beta into what beta into v beta into v so in place of beta into v in place of beta into v i can replace with what i can replace with omega so then it is going to be like what so f of plus r minus plus r minus omega t plus r minus what plus r minus beta x so that means any function which is of this form any function which is of this form will represent what will represent a wave will represent a wave yes or no okay now if you observe so we have seen that uh, if the polarity the polarity before omega t and the polarity before beta x the polarity before beta x and the polarity before omega t if both are of opposite polarity if both are of opposite polarity what i have told here the wave rep it represents what it represents the wave that is propagating along positive x direction Yes or no? So if the polarity before, if the polarity before, polarity before omega t and polarity before beta x, beta x, if both are same, if both are same. Okay, polarity before omega t and polarity before uh, beta x, if both are same, then in this case, the wave is propagating in which direction? Negative x direction. In this case, the wave is going to propagate in negative x direction. If both the, if both the polarities here, if both the polarities, okay, if both are opposite, if both are opposite, if the polarity before omega t and the polarity before beta x, if both are what? Both are opposite, then the wave is going to propagate in which direction? Positive x direction. So this is what we have seen here previously. Yes or no? So any function which is of this form will represent a wave. And uh, depending upon the polarity before omega t and polarity before beta x, we can say the wave is propagating in which direction? So if the polarity before omega t and polarity before beta x, if both are of opposite polarity, then the wave is going to propagate in positive x direction. If the polarity before omega t and uh, the polarity before beta x, if both are of same polarity, then the wave is going to propagate in negative x direction. So all these things we have seen here. Now coming to this solution. Now coming to this solution. Okay. So forget about this one. So what you are having? E power z of omega t minus beta x. E power z of omega t minus beta x. So this represents what? This represents uh, a wave. This is just like what? This is just like this function or not? 
Yes or no? This is just like a wave function. Now here, the polarity before omega t and the polarity before beta x, both are of what? Both are of opposite polarity. So that means this represents what? This represents a wave that is propagating in which direction? That is propagating in positive x direction. So if it represents a wave that is propagating in positive x direction, then it represents what? This represents uh, the amplitude of what? Amplitude of the wave. Yes or no? So this represents uh, this represents uh, amplitude of the wave. V plus into e power minus alpha x will represent what? Will represent amplitude of the wave. And this omega t minus beta x, omega t minus beta x will represent what? Will represents uh, phase of the wave. Will represents phase of the wave. Understood? So this total, this total will represent what? This total will represent a wave propagating in which direction here? Wave, wave propagating, propagating in positive x direction. Wave propagating in positive x direction. Right? Okay. So this represents wave propagating in positive x direction, right? Next, <clears throat> okay. And here, and here, always you have to remember that. Always you have to remember that this v plus, this v plus is nothing but what is general. It is nothing but what it is nothing but a complex quantity. It is nothing but a complex quantity. See, whenever we are representing the waves, uh, like uh, a into e power z of omega t minus beta x. Yes or no? So there, I have explained that this a is nothing but what this a in general is nothing but. Uh, a complex quantity. Yes or no? See, in general, whenever we are representing representing the wave, so here it may have what? It may have some initial phase shift phi. It may have initial phase shift phi. Then you can represent the same thing as what? A into e power j phi into what? E power j of omega t minus beta x. So whenever we are representing here, whenever we are writing like this, we don't represent the initial phase shift of the wave here. Initial phase shift of the wave. So that initial phase shift of the wave, we will include in amplitude. We will include in the amplitude in general so that's why this amplitude this amplitude is what is complex in nature in general it is complex in nature see don't worry about this phi here phi is nothing but initial phase shift what do you mean by initial phase shift whenever t equal to 0 x is equal to 0 whenever t equal to 0 x is equal to 0 uh, this function this function is having some phase shift phi is having some phase shift phi understood that is called as what initial phase shift Okay, so we always include this initial phase, shi phase shift inside what? Inside the amplitude of the wave. Understood? So here V plus, in general, this V plus means uh, you have to understood that, you have to understood that this V plus means uh, V plus is equivalent to what? Is equivalent to V plus into E power Z phi. V plus into E power Z phi. And hence this V plus, you have to treat it as what? This amplitude is nothing but what? This amplitude is nothing but a complex quantity. Okay, so these are the things you have to observe and these are the things that you have to understand from this solution. Okay, so this total term will represent what here? Will represent a wave that is propagating in positive x direction. So this represents v plus into e power minus alpha x represents the amplitude of the wave and omega t minus beta x will represent the phase of the wave and this v plus in general is going to be a complex quantity. So v plus v in general is equal to what? V plus into e power j phi where phi represents what? Where phi represents the initial phase shift of the wave. Understood? Okay. Okay. So, these are the things you have to understand here. These are the things you have to understand. Right? Okay. Next. <clears throat> Next year. Now, see here. Now, see here. Coming to the second term here. Coming to the second term. If you observe the second term. Okay. So, it is also looking in the similar manner. It is also looking in the similar manner. But what is the only change here? Here, if you observe the phase shift, if you observe the phase shift, how it is looking like? E power j of what? E power j of omega t plus what? Omega t plus beta x. So, here in the phase shift, if you observe the polarity before omega t and the polarity before beta x, both are of what? Both are of same polarity. So, that means this represents what? This represents the wave that is propagating in which direction? Negative x direction. Yes or no? So, this represents, this represents a, a wave, this represents a wave propagating in, wave propagating in, in 
negative x direction this represents the wave that is propagating in negative x direction so this represents the phase of the wave and this represents the same thing this represents the amplitude of the wave amplitude of the wave understood and here this v minus this v minus this v minus in general it is nothing but what it is nothing but a complex quantity so v minus is equal to what v minus into e power z phi dash okay some initial phase shift i am representing with phi dash or you can represent here phi 1 and here you can represent phi 2 so whatever you want you can represent here right okay okay so same thing here so this represents this represents the wave that is propagating in positive x direction and this represents the wave this represents the wave that is propagating in negative x direction this represents the wave that is propagating in negative x direction understood now here what we are doing here this is the complete solution this is the complete solution of the voltage waveform on the transmission line yes or no so this is the complete solution this is the complete solution of the voltage of the voltage on the transmission line so what we got here what we got we got uh, a wave that is propagating the wave that is propagating along positive x direction plus what plus the wave that is propagating along negative x direction so it is a superposition of what it is a superposition of a forward traveling wave and what forward traveling wave and backward traveling wave so backward traveling wave means it is propagating in negative x it is propagating forward traveling wave means it is propagating in positive x okay so that means uh, the solution of the voltage the solution of the voltage on the transmission line is uh, is like what here is like uh, a forward traveling wave and and what a reflected wave reflected wave or backward traveling wave see we can say this as forward traveling wave and this as what backward traveling wave or we can say this one as incident wave and this one as what reflected wave so whatever may be the terminology you have to understand that right okay so here the solution of the voltage on the transmission line is a superposition of what is a superposition of forward traveling wave and what and backward traveling wave so if you superimpose if you superimpose the forward traveling wave with what with backward traveling wave the superposition of these two waves will form what will form a standing wave yes or no so while dealing with the nature of the wave while dealing with the nature of the wave i have I have explained uh, what do you mean by standing wave and all those things. Okay, here we will study about the standing wave pattern in more detail as we proceed into the subject. Okay, but as of now, just you have to understand that the solution of the voltage on the transmission line is having what is having a sup a combination of what a combination of forward traveling wave as well as what backward traveling wave. So that superposition of these two will result in what will result in standing wave pattern will result in standing wave pattern. So that means the voltages and similarly the similarly for current also for current also if you do the analysis you are going to get the same results yes or no. So that means what we can conclude here the voltages and currents on the transmission lines will looks like what will looks like a standing wave patterns standing wave patterns understood okay okay so this is what we can understand good morning shiv prasad good morning uh, sonal sir <laughs> good morning sir good morning good morning sir thank you sir thank you very much i am very glad by seeing your comment thank you sir thank you very much sir okay <clears throat> Okay, so similarly, uh, we can write the expression for what? Expression for current also. Understood? So finally, what we can conclude here? What we can conclude? The voltages and currents on the transmission line. So the conclusion is, so the conclusion is uh, voltages and currents, voltages and currents on the transmission line on the transmission line forms what forms standing wave patterns forms standing wave patterns understood okay so this is what you have to understand here this is what you have to understand right okay yeah. okay so now here one more thing you have to observe here is 
see here if you observe this amplitude here if you observe this amplitude so this amplitude is equivalent to what v plus into e power minus alpha x e power minus alpha x that means this amplitude this amplitude is decaying is exponentially decaying along x see this wave is propagating along x direction here this wave is propagating along x direction so as the wave is propagating as this voltage wave is propagating along x direction its amplitude its amplitude is decaying is decaying along x along x Yes or no? Okay. Next, if you observe, if you observe this wave here, this wave represents uh, the wave is propagating in negative x direction. Now here the wave is propagating in negative x direction. So that means uh, this x must be what? This x must be a negative value. Yes or no? This wave is propagating now in negative x direction. That means here x is nothing but what? X is nothing but negative value. And alpha is what? Alpha is some positive constant. So then this represents what? This also represents what? This also represents a decaying amplitude. A decaying amplitude of the wave that is propagating in which direction? Negative x direction. Understood? Okay. So that means here you have to understand that V plus E power minus alpha x and here V minus into E power alpha x represents what? Represents the amplitudes that are decaying, that are decaying as the wave propagates along positive x direction and here as the wave propagates along negative x direction. Understood? Okay. So if the amplitudes of the waves are decaying, if the amplitudes of the waves are decaying means uh, this medium, this medium or this transmission line is behaving as what? Is behaving as a lossy medium. Yes or no here? So whenever you apply a signal, understood? So this signal is propagating from source to load. So initially it is going to move along x direction. So whenever it is propagating along x direction, its amplitude is decaying along x. So that means why it is decaying here? Its amplitude is decaying means uh, that medium, that medium is behaving as what? That medium is behaving as lossy medium. Okay. So see here. So you are having the transmission line like this, yes or no? Okay. So here you are having the load, right? So this is ZL, let us say, and here you are applying some source and uh, the wave, the wave is propagating from source to load. So as it is propagating, its amplitude is what? Its amplitude is decaying. Understood? So this we call it as incident wave or forward wave here. This we call it as incident wave or forward wave. Okay. So here let us assume whenever the wave is propagating, whenever the wave is propagating along positive x direction, whenever the wave is propagating along positive x direction. Understood? Okay. Uh, what I am saying here? Uh, its amplitude is uh, decaying right okay now whenever this incident wave is propagating along x direction it is going to see on the transmission line it is going to see a characteristic impedance of z naught here so i will explain what do you mean by characteristic impedance and all those things okay so whenever the wave is propagating along x direction this incident wave this incident wave is going to see a characteristic impedance of what a characteristic impedance of z naught as it propagates along the line so once it reaches to the load here once it reaches to the load at load it is going to see an impedance of zl which is not equal to what in general it is not equivalent to z naught in general the load impedance is not equivalent to z naught so here whenever it reaches to the load here it is seeing some other impedance which is zl which is not equal to what which is not equal to z naught so there is a impedance mismatch here there is a impedance mismatch between this medium and here this load understood so because of this impedance mismatch what will happen here a part of the wave will get what will get transmitted and a part of the wave will get what will get reflected so hence uh, you are going to see what you are going to see a reflected wave you are going to see a reflected wave understood so as the reflected wave as the reflected wave propagates the reflected wave is going to propagate in negative x direction right okay so the reflected wave is going to propagate along negative x direction understood okay so as it propagates in negative x direction its amplitude is going to decay so as it propagates in positive x direction its amplitude is decaying so that means this medium this medium is behaving as what this line or this transmission line is behaving as what is behaving as lossy medium is behaving as lossy medium or we can say simply this behaving as lossy transmission line lossy transmission line understood so this is the forward wave this is the reflected wave so finally you are going to see finally you are going to see the superposition of these two waves which is nothing but a standing wave pattern on the transmission line
understood okay so i will explain what do you mean by z not all these things i will explain here as we proceed into the subject right okay 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 so here the amplitude of the wave is decaying as v plus e power minus alpha x here the amplitude of this reflected wave is decaying as what v minus into e power alpha x so here x is negative here x is negative so that means it is exponentially decaying understood here alpha is positive as well as x is also positive understood okay so here this alpha here this alpha this alpha we call it as what here this alpha we call it as attenuation constant this alpha we call it as attenuation constant okay so what are the units of attenuation constant here the units of attenuation constant is nothing but nepper per meter or db per meter or db per meter understood okay so what do you mean by attenuation constant what it represents what it signifies okay so it signifies so just write down this one okay so attenuation constant it specifies it specifies how the amplitude of the wave it specifies how the amplitude of the wave decays how the amplitude of the wave how the amplitude of the wave decays for every meter for every meter as the wave propagates as the wave propagates okay so alpha represents what here alpha represents attenuation constant what it specifies here it specifies how the amplitude of the wave decays for every meter as the wave propagates as the wave propagates so as the wave is propagating as the wave is propagating how the amplitude of this wave is going to decay for every meter so that is given by what that is given by alpha see if alpha is equal to 0 here if alpha is equal to 0 then there will be no attenuation of what then there will be no attenuation of the amplitude Yes or no? Okay. So that type of medium, whenever alpha is equal to zero, then that type of medium we call it as what? Lossless medium. So we are going to study all these things in detail here as we proceed into the subject. Okay. So just I am giving, I am introducing each and everything. That's it. Right. Okay. Next, here we are having another parameter that is nothing but what? That is nothing but beta. Yes or no? So here you are having beta. So what do you mean by beta here? So beta already I have explained here. Beta already I have explained. So what is beta? Beta is nothing but phase constant of the wave. Beta represents what? Beta represents a phase constant. Phase constant of the wave. Phase constant of the wave. What it specifies here? It specifies. It specifies how the spatial phase of the wave how the spatial phase of the wave how the spatial phase of the wave changes for for every meter as the wave propagates as the wave propagates in a medium as the wave propagates in a medium understood so it specifies how the spatial phase of the wave changes for every meter as the wave propagates in a medium so that is called as what phase constant phase constant what are the units of phase constant here what are the units of phase constant the units of this phase constant is nothing but what is nothing but radian per meter i have already discussed everything about beta r yes or no so what we got beta is equal to what beta is equal to what we got here 2 pi by lambda 2 pi by lambda radian per meter so about beta already we have discussed 
Understood? So here the new term is alpha. Alpha represents the attenuation constant. It specifies how the amplitude of the wave decays for every meter as the wave propagates, as the wave propagates in a medium, as the wave propagates in a medium. Similarly, beta is called as what? Phase constant of the wave. It specifies how the spatial phase of the wave changes for every meter as the wave propagates in a medium. Right? Okay? Okay. Okay. So, this is about alpha and beta. This is about alpha and beta. Understood? Okay. 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 So, gamma, I said this as what? Gamma is nothing but propagation constant which is equivalent to what? Which is equivalent to alpha plus z beta. Alpha is called as attenuation constant. Its units are nothing but nepper per meter or db per meter and beta is called as phase constant. Its units are nothing but what? Radian per meter or if you want you can represent in terms of degree per meter also. Okay. You know how to convert radian into degrees and degrees into radians. Right. Okay. Now here whenever <coughs> you are representing alpha here whenever you are representing alpha generally we will use this units that is nepper per meter that is nepper per meter understood okay but in sometimes they will ask in terms of what in terms of db per meter so that means here you have to know the conversion between what conversion between neppers and db okay so remember this conversion here directly so that is one nepper one nepper is equivalent to what 8.68 db one nepper is equivalent to what here? One nepper is equivalent to 8.68 dB. So remember this, <coughs> remember this conversion here. So you can use directly this conversion. So wherever you want, uh, wherever uh, you want to convert neppers into dB, there you can directly use this relation. So that is one nepper is equal to what? One nepper is equivalent to 8.68 dB. Understood? Okay. Okay. So, this is propagation constant. So, what it specifies here? What it specifies? How the propagation characteristics? Write down this one. How the propagation characteristics of the wave? See, what do you mean by propagation characteristics of the wave here? For any wave, what are its propagation characteristics? See, whenever you are considering a wave, what you will see? You will see amplitude of the wave and phase of the wave okay so amplitude of the wave and phase of the wave are nothing but what are nothing but the propagation characteristics of a wave yes or no okay so how this propagation constant specifies what how the propagation characteristics of the wave that is what that is that is amplitude and phase that is amplitude and phase okay how the propagation characteristics of the wave changes changes for every meter for every meter every meter as the wave propagates as the wave propagates as the wave propagates in a medium as the wave propagates in a medium understood okay so gamma represents what here gamma represents the propagation constant of the wave so it specifies what it specifies uh, how the propagation characteristics of the wave changes for every meter as the wave propagates in a medium so gamma is equivalent to alpha alpha represents how the amplitude of the wave decays as the wave propagates in a medium and beta represents how the phase of the wave changes for every meter as the wave propagates in a medium understood okay so this gamma represents the overall the overall propagation characteristics how this propagation characteristics are going to change for every meter as the wave propagates in a medium okay so this is all about gamma and alpha and beta right okay so gamma is equal to alpha plus say beta right okay Okay. Okay. So uh, with this, uh, with this, I'm winding up the session for today. So tomorrow we'll study about.
characteristic impedance tomorrow we'll study about characteristic impedance and if possible we'll start a reflection coefficient also okay and if possible we'll start about reflection coefficient also right okay okay yeah. so tomorrow we'll cover characteristic impedance and if possible we'll cover reflection coefficient also right okay so with this i'm winding up the session for today so tomorrow we'll meet exactly at 10 a.m here yeah. tomorrow we'll meet exactly at 10 a.m right okay so every day in our gate academy global channel emt class will be conducted at 10 a.m okay and in the evening here in the evening in our main channel that is gate academy 2.0 channel sonal sir is taking the class for emt understood okay so you can attend those lectures also so from these two you have to get benefited finally finally the students have to get benefited understood okay okay so i think uh, in gate academy 2.0 i think around uh, 6 6 30 i think okay so at 6 30 sar is taking the classes on emt right you can go through those lectures also okay so from these two lectures from my side in gate academy global channel okay here the mode of language will be in english so there the mode of language will be in english uh, hindi understood so whatever the language you are comfortable you can go with that right okay so finally finally whether you study uh, from here or you study from gate academy 2.0 so everything is same here everything is same so finally our motive is student have to get benefited right and he has to understand the emt very well so that is our motive right okay so we are doing our best here we are doing our best so it's your turn to grab it and uh, learn each and everything right okay so tomorrow exactly at 10 a.m we are going to start the session so daily the classes will be conducted exactly at 10 a.m in our gate academy global channel okay 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 yaar. so thank you so thank you very much so uh, tomorrow we'll meet again at 10 a.m so until then take care bye bye